Welcome to the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. My name is Andrzej Zlinski. I will show you how to initialize and use the Sentinel Hub QGIS plugin. In QGIS, in the Plugins menu, you select Manage and Install Plugins. You search for Sentinel. And you select the Sentinel Hub plugin. Once you have installed the plugin, an icon appears on your toolbar. If you click this, you will see the login page of the plugin, which will offer you a service URL and it will ask for a client ID and a client secret. This ID and this secret is related to an OAuth client, an automatic authorization method for the OGC API. This is how you create such a client. You go to your user dashboard in the Copernicus data space and in the user settings you select create new OAuth client. You give it a name and then you select create client. A client secret is shown. This has to be copied locally because it won't appear anywhere else later. Make sure you have this. When you close the process, you have a new client which also has a client ID. Copy this client ID into the client ID row of the login page and also copy the client secret which you have copied locally. Paste it into the client secret line. Once this is all set, you can log in to Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem and start accessing satellite imagery. I will put the plugin into the layers panel. The next step is to create a configuration. Again, you go back to the dashboard and in the configuration utility of the dashboard, you select a new configuration. You can select from a variety of templates for Sentinel satellites and also several different layers of pre-processing. We are going to select simple Sentinel 2 uh, level 2A. This is our new configuration. And this configuration offers a selection of layers which will be accessible in the plugin. Now that we log in again, we can access the configuration. And we can also select the individual layers inside this configuration. First, we select true color. In the next step, the calendar panel provides us with an uh, overview of which dates have Sentinel-2 imagery accessible. This can be filtered based on cloud coverage. You will see that the cloud images disappear from the list. And now that we have selected one image, we use exact date in this case because we don't want mosaicing, but if we wanted a time series, we could apply mosaicing based on different priorities. For a single date, we create our first satellite imagery data layer in QGIS. The data loads, just like any other layer. You can zoom and pan around and investigate your area of interest. If you want to compare a different visualization, you can select a different layer from your configuration, for example, color infrared. And again, you can select the same date and create a new layer. These two layers are on top of each other and can be compared by switching on and off. If you want to look at processes in time, you can also select a different time and add an image that you're interested in, again, to a new layer. which allows you to compare processes as they happen in time.
by adjusting layer transparency it is also possible to create an overlay where you see your baseline data which is underneath your sent uh, sentinel imagery now I can show you how to create an advanced configuration to make the most of the capabilities of Copernicus data space ecosystem we want to add a custom configuration using a custom script that works for water quality mapping again we go to the dashboard in the configuration utility we create a new configuration this time we select based on the full WMS template to use all the tools available we create the configuration and in this configuration we add a new layer one that we define ourselves our data source is going to be Sentinel-2 but the data processing offers a wide range of scripts including the custom script repository here we take the Ulysses Water Quality Viewer custom script we copy the full text of this script and paste it into the custom script editor in the configuration utility this is the script we save it and as we log into the plugin again this new configuration is going to be available in our configuration selection within this configuration we select the water quality layer and we create a new data layer for it what we see when the processing is complete is that this internal lagoon has a rather high algae concentration and the river flowing in disperses sediment along the shore one of the reasons for adding satellite imagery into QGIS is that you can directly edit your own vector data based on what you see on the images here I will show you a small case study of crop class recognition by visual interpretation using a time series normally on a single satellite image it's rather difficult to discern crops but if you can look at the whole crop cycle then based on the harvesting and sowing dates and the greening of the parcels it's relatively simple to identify the major crop classes here I have used the Sentinel Hub plugin to create a time series of monthly satellite imagery mosaics I'm using true color data from Sentinel 2 this is the year of 2019 and I am mosaicing for each layer images from the first to the last date of the month with a small selection on cloud coverage so here we have a series of imagery from April May June July August September and October the background map is OpenStreetMap our location is Emmetsham a small town in southeast Germany in Bavaria and we have a number of parcels that have been digitized which we want to use for identification of the crop class the first image mosaic we see is from April the only information we can discern from this is that parcels 1 and 10 are definitely spring crops they are not sown yet they are not green yet all the rest of the parcels are green which means they could be winter crops or grasslands if we move further to May we see that for parcels 2 3 and 4 the characteristic yellow color of rapeseed flowering is present so these parcels can already be identified as rapeseed moving on to the next month in June we see that parcels 5 and six are already harvested so this identifies them as winter cereals some winter cereals are harvested relatively early in the year already in late June so parcels five and six are identified based on their harvest date
during the next month. In July we see that parcel 7 is also harvested and parcels 2, 3 and 4 are also harvested according to the practice of cultivating rapeseed. But we also see that for parcel 8 and 9 we have slightly less greenness, slightly less vegetation than in June. This implies that they have probably been mown. The suggestion is that parcels 8 and 9 must be grasslands but we can only be sure if we've seen the time series for the whole year. But parcel 7 is clearly identified also as a winter cereal. What we see in August is that parcels 5 and 6 have green growth on them again. There must be a catch crop that has been sown after the harvest to conserve the soil. In September we don't see much of a difference. Parcel 9 has probably been mown again. Parcel 7 has a catch crop. And in October we see that parcel 1 has been harvested and harvest is in progress for parcel 10 as well. So this identifies these parcels clearly as maize. Parcels 8 and 9 have been green throughout the whole year. They have not been ploughed, there hasn't been a bare soil phase, so this identifies these parcels as grasslands. So with this very simple selection of a satellite imagery time series using Copernicus data space and the QGIS plugin, we have been able to identify the main crops which we wouldn't have been able to do using one single satellite image and its visualization. Thank you for watching this video. Bear with us on the Copernicus Data Space Ecosystem. Follow our news and our further information. Thank you.